the ePortfolio. Many of you will have used these before in one format or another, but we also know it'll be new to many of you. Once you get used to it, the ePortfolio you're required to use is actually pretty intuitive, but given the complexities of what it's required to do, learning everything may take some time. This video isn't designed as a complete user guide. For answers to further questions you may have, or a full user guide, look at the ePortfolio information section of the JRCPTB website. The ePortfolio is the main training record for the trainee, obtained after enrolment with JRCPTB for the training programme. It contains the curricula for sign-off, educational, probity and health declarations, areas for personal development plans, records the details of your appraisal meetings, logs workplace-based assessments, provides space for reflective practice and a personal library, and finally is used to record your ARCP outcome. Some areas are restricted for trainee access alone, others for trainer access alone. Unfortunately, there's a fee for use of the ePortfolio, which has to be paid to JRCPTB in order to recover the development and running costs of it. If you haven't got a login to the portfolio upon starting your job, contact your local programme administrator. The ePortfolio helps you to plan and develop your learning throughout the training programme to attain the competencies defined in the curriculum. Development of the ePortfolio is the trainee's responsibility and you should keep it up to date on a regular basis and not leave the completion of it until you have the deadline of an ARCP approaching. It's also the trainee's responsibility to present their ePortfolio to their educational supervisor on a regular basis for appraisal of the evidence of competencies. Do not expect your educational supervisor to spend hours the day before your ARCP looking at it for the first time. Little and often is better. The ePortfolio is simple to use and navigated using the drop-down menus. The best way to really get used to it is to use it, play around with the functions and try and do things. You can't break it. It shouldn't take you long to be fully competent. If you come up against any difficulties, as well as looking at the JRC PTB guides, a help function can be accessed directly from the ePortfolio. If this doesn't answer your question, your educational supervisor, RCP tutor, TPD or programme administrator should be able to help. If you find you're unable to write in any section, denoted by a red X, this is because you do not have access for this task, e.g. you will not be able to write your own end of placement appraisal. This must be completed through your supervisor's login by your supervisor personally. Other important features of the ePortfolio you'll need to get used to is its linking items of evidence, such as TBDs, mini kegs or reflections to curriculum items. This can be done by finding the piece of evidence and then selecting link next to it and then curriculum item. To see what may be relevant to each curriculum item, click the information or I button next to it in the curriculum view for a detailed descriptor. Once you've completed your first few assessments, written a few reflections and attended some teaching sessions, you'll probably be in a position to start signing off curriculum items. Don't worry if you can't sign off anything that's fully competent or achieved just yet. It's perfectly acceptable to start with having some experience and suggesting what you need to do to sign it off fully. Remember, this isn't a one-year programme, so not everything has to be perfect immediately, but adequate progression has to be shown each year, as defined in the ARCP decision aid. Sign-off needs to be done first by a trainee doing a self-rating, and then, subsequently, by a supervisor. To sign an item off, open the curriculum and select the pen icon next to the curriculum item. Give your rating, and then you can explain why you've given that below with something such as really relevant CBD on 23rd of April, teaching session certificate and reflection from 4th of September, and reflection on case from 13th of January. Your trainer can then complete the sign-off under their own login by following the same process and reviewing your evidence. Trainees often ask what is acceptable evidence for sign-off for a curriculum item. This is hard to answer, but if both highly relevant and covering the item descriptor well, it's possible to just have one assessment and one reflection for an item. We certainly discourage you from linking things when the connection is tenuous, as at your ARCP, your linkages are sampled, and this wouldn't demonstrate that you've achieved the curriculum objective. All curriculum items can be signed off as individual items, and the emergency presentations require individual sign-off. But for both common competencies, top and other important presentations, 
group sign-off is acceptable. This is done by clicking the pencil icon next to the relevant major section, e.g. common competencies. Whatever is recorded here will be put next to all the items in the section. This is designed to make it easier for your supervisor to sign off a number of items at once. They need to sample the evidence you've given for a number of the individual sections and record what they've sampled when recording group sign-off in the free text section. There are a few sections of your portfolio it's worth looking at and updating as early as possible, preferably right now. Firstly, check your personal details are correct by clicking the profile menu and then personal details. If you discover that your supervisors are different to that recorded in the ePortfolio, please inform your program administrator who can advise on where to go from here and organise updating the information. Important details to update yourself at this stage include email and phone numbers, and it's useful to upload a photo of yourself so that assessors, who you may have worked with less frequently, can better recall your assessments if not done immediately. If there are any incorrect details, you can't update yourself, yourself contact your programme administrator. Secondly, sign your declarations of probity and health and educational agreements under profile menu and declarations and agreements. These need to be signed off at the beginning of each year, ideally when you first log on to the ePortfolio. All doctors must have integrity and honesty and must take care of their own health and well-being so as not to put others at risk. This is clearly set out in good medical practice. You must, therefore, read the relevant sections of good medical practice before completing the self-declarations for health and probity. Finally, check that your relevant certificates are entered by clicking Profile Menu, Certificates and Exams and College Exams Certificates. These must include ALS and MRCP, but the list is not exhaustive. The trainee can enter these to be confirmed later by their supervisor. All parts of MRCP must be verified by your supervisor in the curriculum area of your portfolio. The JRCP TB now upload MRCP results into the college exams slash certificates area of the ePortfolio. You're advised not to fill up this section with certificates from online learning modules, but keep it for professional qualifications and mandatory courses. You can enter certificates from online modules into your library and use reflective practice in order to use these to link with the curriculum.